For a few years now, I've been covering using Raspberry Pis to emulate consoles and arcade boards on CRTs, and while most of the videos and work that I've done is still accurate, I wanted to put together a video that's a summary for people just getting into the scene, as well as a quick overview for people that just want to know what options are still available or new for 2020. So stick around and see what we got. Using a Raspberry Pi on pretty much any display is a pretty cost-effective way to build a dedicated emulation platform. And while it's not going to be nearly as fast as a modern PC, it should be good enough in most scenarios. And in my opinion, especially with arcade boards, because the alternative is usually very costly and complicated compared to just slapping together a Raspberry Pi. Now, one way to make emulation of classic games feel more accurate is to play them on CRT TVs. Not only do you remove the lag flat panels usually add, but the games can look almost exactly like they would with original hardware. And as a result, people have come up with some pretty awesome ways to connect a Raspberry Pi to their CRTs. First, let's start with the basic software overview. Regardless of the output you choose, Raspberry Pis require their own custom software images, which need to be flashed to a micro SD card. The other videos I've done, as well as the guide on the website, shows that in detail, so I'll just gloss over it here. Format your SD card, run a disk imaging software, and wait for it to load. Custom builds meant for each device will be pre-configured, but if you'd like to use your own software, just edit the config.txt file that's on the micro SD card with the timings that match each device that you're using. The software builds I generally recommend are RetroPie, Laka, and the custom RGB Pi OS. If you're using a Raspberry Pi 3 or earlier, there's not much to worry about, but Raspberry Pi 4 support often requires a custom build, has issues, or doesn't work at all yet. I imagine as time goes on, our Pi 4 support will be just as stable as the rest, but for now, just expect some weirdness with software builds on the 4. Okay, now on to hardware solutions. I'll go through my favorite options, but the most important factor in choosing what's best for you is their output signals and connectors, so definitely keep your setup in mind as you watch. First is about as basic and easy as it gets. Simply use the Raspberry Pi's composite video output. Original Raspberry Pis have a composite port, and later models use a 3.5mm custom jack. You need to make sure to use an adapter that's compatible with it, or just solder directly to the Pi's composite video pads like I did here. I just soldered signal to PP24 and ground to PP6, and now this Raspberry Pi 3 has a custom composite video output. Depending on the hardware and software revisions, you either need to add some custom lines to the config.txt file, or simply leave the HDMI port unplugged. More detailed information is available on RetroRGB.com, linked in the description. I think some people seem to forget that composite on a CRT is a perfectly good solution, and if you're just starting out, this might be the easiest way to get started. If you'd like a higher quality output though, I'll start by recommending one of my old favorites for RGB enthusiasts, the RGB Pi. This device is the perfect solution for someone who just wants an easy way to integrate a Raspberry Pi into their existing SCART setup. Simply load their custom software onto a micro SD, plug in the adapter, and enjoy some 240p RGB awesomeness. Their software is really great too, and might even be my favorite out there. The same team even sells a JAMA version of this adapter, which I'm currently using in a mini arcade machine. More on that in another video though. Another awesome solution is the RetroTINK Ultimate, which was designed by Mike Chi and is currently being sold by Castlemania Games. This outputs component video, S-video, and RGB via a D-sub connector, as well as composite video. As far as I know, this is the only hardware solution that supports multiple outputs, as well as the only one that supports S-video output. You could make or buy a custom cable that allows you to break out the VGA connector to SCART, but I think an easier solution is to use a VGA to BNC cable and connect this directly to your RGB monitor or BNC switch. Mike prepared a pre-configured image, but if you'd like to use different software, simply copy the Tink Ultimate's custom timings to the config.txt file. Also, people have reported success using it with the Raspberry Pi 4. There's some more solutions that perform equally as well as the others, but might fit people's setups a little bit better due to their output connectors. 
One of the first Raspberry Pi hats made is still available, the Pi to SCART. It's a great solution for people who want to use a longer SCART cable to connect their Pi, and I've heard it's working with a Pi 4 as well. There's a new solution that uses RCA connectors for its RGBS output. It performed well in my tests, and it's great for people who want to use the RCA to BNC solutions to go directly into their monitor. There's still a bunch of VGA hats available as well, but I'd only suggest these for people who need solutions that require RGBHV. Anyone looking to use RGBS would still need a sync combiner and definitely shouldn't just combine the two syncs together. That sends too much voltage to the monitor and could potentially do some damage. One really interesting option that was recently discovered is the ability to output CRT-compatible signals over HDMI. All you'll need to do is add the correct configuration to the config.txt file and choose a basic digital-to-analog converter. You can use HDMI to VGA if that's the connector your setup uses, but in my opinion, the best option is HDMI to component video. You can use these with consumer-grade TVs or even RGB monitors. That would also make this one of the cheapest solutions out there, as these converters generally cost around $20, and the ones I've tested don't add any lag to the image. So that's just a quick summary of how to get started using Raspberry Pi to game on CRTs, using both new and existing solutions. I hope this was a good way to get people started, or I guess a good refresher for anybody that's already been in the loop. But if you'd like more detailed information and guides, please check out my previous videos and link to a page on the website that walks you through exactly how to do all this stuff and doesn't just skip over it like I did here. Well, that's it for this time. If you enjoyed this video and you'd like to see more like it, please consider signing up for any of the support platforms such as Patreon or Floatplane, because without your support, none of these videos could happen. Also, please check out the weekly podcast that airs every Wednesday that keeps everybody in the loop of everything going on in the retro gaming scene. It's available both as a video and everywhere audio podcasts can be found. Thanks very much, and I'll see you next time.